just can I begin by getting your reaction to what you've just heard there? How would you characterize the security situation in the Middle East now and the risk of a wider regional conflict as a result of that comment from Iran's supreme leader? Well, I think uh, Israel's attack on the Iranian consulate building uh, in Damascus is uh, a significant change in the rules of engagement, the implicit rules of engagement that have, uh, in a sense, governed uh, the confrontation and the shadow war between Iran and Israel. This is the first uh, attack of its kind, a direct, ostentatious Israeli strike on an Iranian uh, diplomatic mission. Now, on one level, it's an attempt by Israel, obviously, to impose greater costs on Iran for supporting armed non-state actors in the region, such as Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis, uh, the Palestinian Jihad, Hamas, and others that are engaged directly or indirectly in conflict uh, with Israel. But I think there is a wider political effect that Israel is trying to achieve here. Uh, and I think it's uh, an attempt to shift the narrative from being a war uh, with uh, Hamas and the Palestinians to being a war uh, against Iran. Uh, and I think Israel has um, uh, seized itself as being increasingly isolated. We've seen the U.S. choose not to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire last week. Uh, we've seen uh, increasingly vocal U.S. criticism uh, of, the, of Israel's conduct in this war. And I think achieving this shift in narrative, turning this into a confrontation primarily against Iran, uh, rather than simply a uh, conflict with Hamas, uh, I think is an attempt by Israel to bring the U.S. on board uh, and to change the narrative. Now, Iran's reaction uh, is to be expected. The statements by Ayatollah uh, Khamenei and uh, other Iranian uh, leaders do not necessarily mean that we're going to see direct and immediate uh, retaliation and counter-escalation by Iran. Uh, Iran often takes uh, its time. I think uh, Iran probably does not want uh, to see an immediate uh, uh, escalation for fear that uh, this would escalate directly into an all-out war. Uh, and so we might see a delayed and calibrated Iranian response uh, that, that cannot be ruled out. What that looks like remains to be seen. Hassan also wanted to shift focus and look at the situation on the ground in Israel. The military chief there saying this Israeli strike that killed seven aid workers in the Gaza Strip was a result of what he called a, quote, misidentification. He called it a grave mistake that shouldn't have happened. Do you believe the explanation the Israelis are offering? I'm not a forensic expert, but I think uh, it's obvious that Israel is having to perform quite a bit of uh, verbal and mental gymnastics to justify this attack, uh, the killing of seven aid workers uh, in multiple strikes uh, some distance apart as a mistake. Uh, I think we've seen a broader and systematic pattern of uh, targeting aid workers, of targeting hospitals, uh, of targeting uh, Gaza's civilian infrastructure and the Gazan economy. Um, and so I think Israel has very broadly shown itself to be totally unconcerned uh, with the civilian casualty uh, toll and the fallout uh, of its uh, highly problematic conduct of this atrocious uh, campaign. Uh, and so I think the point that uh, Israel has conducted this war with very little regard for international law and with very little regard for civilian life is, I think, a point that uh, has already been very well established uh, prior to this incident and I think is probably only further reinforced uh, by this extremely tragic uh, and uh, uh, highly problematic incident. And Hassan, this was an airstrike on aid workers. Accident or not, do you believe it's a violation of international humanitarian law? I'm not the best place to comment on uh, what this means from an international legal perspective. There are uh, others that are uh, very well placed. But I think it's uh, very easy to simply refer to uh, the what very credible and neutral uh, international legal scholars and authorities have been saying. We have an ICJ ruling that essentially uh, means that Israel is very plausibly violating the Genocide Convention. Uh, the UN Security uh, uh, the UN uh, uh, Secretary General, the uh, UN rapporteurs on Palestine, on food and on other issues, have very clearly spoken out against 
uh, Israel's violations of international law. So I think we, it's very clear from an international legal perspective, based on what these neutral bodies, first and foremost uh, the ICJ, but various other uh, UN bodies have uh, said, that there are clearly, there's a, clearly here a systematic and repeated uh, pattern of uh, violating international law. That, I think, is, is quite obvious. Just finally, Hassan, the U.S. says it's, quote, outraged at this incident. What type of response are we likely to see from the Biden administration? Well, so far, the U.S.'s response has been, on the one hand, to issues criticism, which admittedly has grown uh, somewhat more vocal in recent weeks, uh, while at the same time uh, totally continuing in the unconditional provision of military aid and assistance uh, to Israel. Uh, so I think uh, U.S. expression of concerns uh, aren't necessarily very credible here, uh, especially since they're not accompanied by uh, any change in uh, the U.S.'s policy of providing unconditional uh, military support to Israel uh, on the ground. Uh, if the U.S. were serious about expressing uh, outrage and trying to change Israel's behavior in this war, then I think we would have seen uh, an attempts to condition uh, Israel's access to military aid uh, on uh, greater, ensuring greater respect for international law, allowing aid to come in, uh, and of course uh, doing uh, much more to prevent uh, civilian uh, deaths uh, in the context of this war.